What's up guys, Headphones Neil here with a slightly different review of sorts, notably because um, as of this recording, uh, we have the news that Sean Connery passed away at around the age of 90, so it was peaceful and all of that, but I thought I would do a special tribute review for the first films that I knew him from and his final film, um, just as my thoughts and uh, review to honor an actor that I enjoy seeing on the big screen. So the first film that I wanted to do a quick review of is um, Dr. No. It's Sean Connery's first outing as James Bond and the first Bond film ever made. And overall the film I want to say generally stands up. You do have things here and there that don't stand up, so some of the technology, some of the views, but when you look at things like going to a specific locale, like the island that my daughter knows on, some of the technology, some of the interrogation skills, you see how some a lot of that has carried through over the years. Um, of all the, and I'm putting in quotes, special effects, the thing that definitely held up for me is Dr. No's lair. So it's underwater. You have the view of the aquarium with the sharks and all the various fish and all of that. Um, you have the elevators and all of that. So generally for the first um, Bond villain and a film of that era, a lot of it holds up. I mean, it does stand out when you have some of the switches and the vast spaciousness of the layer where they're going to set off the rockets and all of that but it generally holds up for the time and it does feel out of place at, at bit for bits and then you also have a lack of a lot of the various gadgets but you do have the start of um, bond being upgraded with um something to help him on his mission so in this film it's upgrading his existing gun that has a history of jamming and not being very well to getting the uh, Walther PPK so there's a start of that so things like that the film generally holds up and I enjoyed and then we end up with the bond, with Dr. No's death with because he has fake arms he's unable to save himself and um, Bond eventually saves the day and then we have the Bond girl. So in this case, I forget the other girl that he's with, but we have Ursula Andress as the main villain or the main Bond girl. So um, there's a start of that. We have the help with, uh, or we have the introduction of Felix Leiter. So that character is carried throughout the films. Um, you have the assistant with, um, and I forget the guy's name, who's telling Bond and Felix about the lore of the island, about the. Um, why it's cursed, the dragon that turned out to be a tank and all of that. So things like that make for it to be a very enjoyable film. And it makes me want to see the rest of the Bond films in sequence. Uh, whether they're specifically just the um, Sean Connery ones or all the actors, but I want to kind of watch them all in order now just to see, just to track all those various changes that happen over time. But that's all there is for that, so I'll jump right into Sean Connery's final film, and that's The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. So, I think I saw it once before, maybe in bits and pieces, I forget if it may have been on TV or something like that, but generally the film didn't do very well, but in watching it now, after the fact, I do want to say that the film generally works as bringing together a group of um, superheroes, in quotes, because they're more of the monster, kind of the universal monster style of team up, and it's um, generally enjoyable with the character and interaction. So you have Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Uh, um, you have uh, Mina Harker. You have uh, Dorian Gray, uh, Captain Nemo, t um, Tom Sawyer, and then Sean Connery um, as Alan Quartermain is leading the group, and then. As a nod to the Bond films, you have um, a guy called M recruiting Sean Connery to um, continue this league. So I found that um, bit of um, tie-in a bit cheesy, but very interesting just to make it uh, fit. And then in reading the trivia, I've read that they were going to have um, a character play the great ancestor of James Bond just to throw that in. But um, having that and M might have um been a bit much but it was nice to have the m tie-in so overall you have alan quartermain as a guy beyond his years 
who's fought in a lot of wars, having to be having been called back into service to um, defeat the current threat and move um, the world into the next generation, and he, he has to help capture all the various characters. So think of this. So to me, this film kind of felt like a Victorian style or very or a more gothic version of. Um, the first Avengers film where you have um, S.H.I.E.L.D. pulling together all the various superheroes to form a team to stop the current threat of world domination, extinction, or some mass level event like that from happening. So while it doesn't have that same scope because you don't have all the films and various tie-ins and history being built up, they are relying more on people knowing the characters to begin with, so you, you're expected to know that Dorian Gray and Mina Harker are vampires. You're expected to know the backstory of um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. you expected to know the classicalness of Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. Um, and all of that, and then Captain Nemo, same thing there with his submarine and various gadgets and, being, and having knowledge and technology beyond his time. And then Alan Quartermain is that guy you're supposed to be introduced to to bring them all together. So thinking along those lines, it kind of works. And it's more of, like I said, that Victorian style of film. So it's not necessarily on the scope of Avengers or a Marvel film. But for me, it, it worked. It was enjoyable. I liked seeing their interactions. I liked seeing that Alan Quartermain was reluctantly taking Tom Sawyer under his wing. How Quartermain sees those things that other people don't and how put things together. Um, overall, I want to say that my favorite character would probably be Captain Nemo because he has the the submarine and the car and all that technology beyond his time. And he's creating that means of um, getting everyone around and providing that means of getting the information so they know what to do next. Um, the only thing that kind of stood out to me as not being as good or as kind of quirky and weird was that when they were tra traveling around the town to the different cities, like to getting to Venice and using the car and the submarine, that there was no reaction from people of the time of what all of that stuff was. So it wasn't really presented well as to maybe I, um, they knew of Captain Nemo and all his technology, so it was nothing new of what he had, so they were not really shocked at it, and he was the only one who had it, so they knew that if they saw one of those fancy gadgets, it must be Captain Nemo. Or if there was, there was some, for some reason they were out of, like, visibility or something and no one saw them but that would be kind of taking it too far and it felt like at the basic level that it was kind of an oversight that no one really thought about how the people of the time would react so the best explanation I could come up with which was not presented well but um, just thinking about it after for the fact that everyone knew who Captain Nemo was, is and just accepted it as fact of Technology, if it's advanced futuristic technology, it must be Captain Nemo. So I kind of left it at that and didn't really think anything of it beyond that. So that's all there is for this review. So overall, um, I would say the films to watch would be the James, would be Sean Connery's James Bond films. Um, and actually, sorry, before I move on to that, I would say that um, Sean Connery's performance in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen felt like a mix of James Bond and um, Indiana Jones's dad in the Indiana Jones film, um, Last Crusade or no Raiders of I always mix up Raiders of the Lost Ark and the Last Crusade, but whichever film he played Indiana Jones senior or Indiana Jones's dad, so it was a mix of those those two characters. So I kind of like that, and it was a guy beyond his prime. So we could it felt kind of like a retirement film more than anything else but for me it was enjoyable and it was good to see him in the film but um as far as the films to watch i kind of now watching these two films i want to kind of go back and see the rest of the sean connery bond films um just to see how they hold up and um how they feel now seeing them after the fact i know i have seen them before in some aspect and they were mostly the television films so they were there were commercial interruptions and all of that so there's not really much throughput to see how they hold up without commercials, so that's kind of why I want to go back and see them. But those are definitely the films to watch and very enjoyable, and he does bring it in every single film that he's in, as far as I know. After James Bond, I know there's a few does prior to that, like Zardoz and a few others, but um, 
Sean Connery in, as, as James Bond worked, him in Indiana Jones was good, and him in The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was good. But that is all for this particular episode. So if you want to get in touch with me, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. You can find the website at PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But that's all there is for this review. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.